let's build a template. So let's, let's kind of pick up the pace a little bit and make this a little bit more exciting. But it was important that I at least, that you at least understand the architecture and that everything derives from like this base plugin class. So in MediaFront 2.0, I try to make it as easy as possible to build new plugins, okay? And I did this uh, using a, a hook system and I've already built a plug, I've already built the module just for the sake of time. I did not want to build it here, but I will contribute this module that I built. Um, I will contribute this module to the, the MediaFront 2.0 branch so that everyone will have this as a reference. <coughs> this is how you do templates. All, let's say you want to build a template for MediaFront. You, in your module, uh, a template, okay, so a template is, a template is this, and you'll be excited to see that a template is very, very familiar to you, because it is a tpl.php file, which means I am, I am basically drawing the media player in Drupal language, which is, what's, what's really cool about this is it's also registered like any other template, which means I could actually just copy and paste this in my, my template folder, and override the markup of my media player, of all the media players on the page. <coughs> if you want a quick and dirty way of doing it, sure, go ahead, do that. If you if you have a client, if you have a client that wants like their own like wicked awesome template that does that does something different, you're going to need to create a, a, your own template because the whole does something different means you're going to have to derive a JavaScript class off the base class to do that different, that's something different than the base does. And I'll do that. I'll do that in this demo. So here's, here's your use case. In fact, I get this a lot. I want to show on the media player, I want to show the title of the media that's being played. How do you do that? Well, most of you who know how Drupal themes already are probably going to say, well, just add that to the template and add a variable in the template that will populate that in the template. Yeah, you can do that. The only problem is this is a dynamic media player, meaning if I went to just player, well, I can't go there. This changes. So you guys saw it when it was like the media player. And as I was clicking, it was like dynamically changing. That, when you do it statically, just by just search and replace, add your, add your thing to the template file and you think you're done, you're doing it statically. That works for a very rare use case. Most people want it to actually dynamically change along with the media content. And to do that, you have to tap in to the data, to the, the natural data feed that MediaFront expects. So we're going to do that right now. So inside, I'm actually going to contribute this. The first thing you're going to do is create a custom, a custom module, and you're going to do one hook called OSM Player Info. And you're going to pass this templates. I've already written a helper function for you so that all you have to do is pass in the path to a folder, and this guy will just do everything for you. Okay, And it'll cache it so that it, it's, it's performant. And all that is, is my templates folder <coughs> is structured exactly how the regular MediaFront template is, is structured. You have a templates. Inside that, you have another folder, which is the name of the template. So you could have, you could build multiple templates here by doing this. So you can have them all inside one, one module. <coughs> this is my custom template. What I did here is I just copied and pasted. I went into OSM Player. I went into Player. And I went into these templates. Here are the, here are the templates that you get out of media from by default. And I, I actually copied simple black because it's a it's a it's an easier template. Default is it kind of it's kind of like the um, it tries to do everything. Simple black was built for a very specific use case, so it's it's a little simpler. I copied and I pasted, renamed the folder, changed simple black to custom here. I went through all of this in the, the CSS I changed simple black to custom and then I changed all of these to custom. You see, I just search and replace. Inside each JavaScript file, you're going to open them. You're going to go down to the very bottom. 
and this string did say simple black, you're just going to change that to custom. So you just you just have to do that for all of the templates. Custom, custom. That that part took me three minutes to create a create a uh, create a module, throw the throw a, a default template in there, just do do some quick renames. Three minutes that it takes. Now let's add the title. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to change the markup, and we want to actually change where we want to put that title. I've already done this because I don't want to build this in front of you. Just take my word for it. This is how you do it. It's just markup. That's all we do. And I leave the title field. Where I want to put the title, I leave it blank. So I have my info block. I have my title block. I leave it blank. It is a template. So this is just a CSS selector inside your JavaScript? Yep. Yeah, okay. And so that's it. I've now touched my template file. That's, that's, me, that's me modifying the TPL file. And keep in mind, I now have my own custom template, so I can, you can go crazy here. Do you have any data or logic in this template, really? Nope. Other than the parameters up top? That's it. It's, it's just a freak ton of divs. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a ton of divs, and I'll show you what I do with those. Oh, that's a pretty good idea of what you do with those. <laughs> now, now that I've got that established, I need to make my media player aware of this. And you do that within, um, you can actually do it within any, any one of these. The logical place here is this one, which is the, the custom, is it derives from the OSM player, which is basically the wrapper. So this one's kind of like the dumping ground for anything specific you want to do. Yeah. If, you want, if you want to throw something in the control bar, you could do it in the control bar. You would just do it in the controller custom JS file. It depends on where you want to put it. If you want to, if you want to slap it inside the um, the control bar, which starts here, I probably need to document that better of like where where plugins begin and where they end. But the the controller starts here. So if you want to throw something in here, the logical place to put it would be inside the controller class. Would it be rough to break those up into different TPL files? I did that in Media from 1.0, and I drove people crazy. Really? <clears throat> which I, I I would consider doing it again. It just it becomes unwieldy. And people don't know well, where they fit. Sort of does that. It can be really useful and it can be really annoying. So, yeah. You know. I, I've, I've, I've learned that it, it's actually faster just to just... And then what I'll do is I'll add some better documentation. Say like the controller class starts here or within the markup. So that way people can at least understand where, where things end, where things begin. So PHP will be strictly for putting in comments. Yes. <laughs> um... So in here, what I want to do is I first want to tell my media player how to find that, hey, you are now interested in a new field. And you do that in the get elements, where all I do is I say I want this to be the title. And now you simply find it. And we called it media player title. I believe that's what we called it. Media player, title. Always copy and paste. It's less error prone, isn't it, Scott? I always get on to Scott because he tries to type everything out. and he, then he, it, It's error prone. Just copy and paste. Now, now that I've done that, I, throughout my template, anywhere, I have access to something called this element's title. And that points to that item. Now this is going to be really cool for people who know object-oriented programming. I want to set that title to the title of my node. Well, as you can see in my TPL file, I don't see anywhere where a node is established. However, the base class defines a method, and all of this is documented. If you go to, um, if you go to like MediaFront, MediaFront.org and go to documentation, and there's a developer developer documentation. All of the class hierarchies and all the class structures are documented using Java doc. So you, you have some you have something to assist you on what what methods. So here I'm I'm looking here, I'm I'm clicking on the OSM class and I'm looking here. Ah, I have there is a method that I might be interested in. It's called load node. So I can click on that. And that takes me, it says, the load, the load node function, well, that's probably not very helpful, but regardless, <laughs> that's the one I'm interested in. 
And because my template derives from this class, you can override it. Let's do that. So let's go to my source. I'm going to go and find my load node function. There it is. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to go over to my custom class. Load node. I'm going to give it the same signature as everyone else, which all it is ends up being is this. Oh. Now, in object-oriented programming, I've just overridden a base class. You have to allow it to do its thing first. And to do that, you have to basically call the parent or super in programming languages. In JavaScript, I apologize, but it's this. It's You have to call the prototype, the name of the method, and then you have to call it with your this pointer. That is the pattern. I apologize. But that is how you call the base class. You just have to learn it. And once you learn it, it's not so difficult. Now I'm letting the base class do its thing. And then all I want to do, this node, we're going to get to this, but this node eventually will have a title. Actually, it already does. But um, this elements title, node title. By default, I stuff the title into the data object. But I would like to go over what you have to do if I wanted to make this the body. Because you have to do just one other step, which I'll, I'll do that. Is element huh? Is element Elements. Good job. Thank you. Uh, oh, and this is title, and this is this is a jQuery element, so I just want to set the text. This is this is a jQuery element, so I want to set the text to the no title, and then I'm done. So then once I go, um, so now. Whenever I click on these, you're not going to see it. I'm expecting that because I did not tell my preset to use my new custom, my new custom template. You have to go to media front presets, node player, and player information, pre presentation. I need to make my custom template now the template for the node player. There it is. And as you can see, there's my title. It, pulled, it pulls in the title. And what's awesome about this is now, if I had a playlist and everything, and, it, and I was clicking on those, the playlist, that, that title would just change right along with it. Because it made that connection, it made that, that sync. You do have a playlist, right? <clears throat> there you go, see? It, and that's why, that's why you can't use the static, the static um, uh, injection of the, the TPL file is because th this stuff happens all the time with media, where you, you have to dynamically change the presentation based on what's being played. All right, there's one last thing that I want to talk about, which is, let's say you want to, th th that one step that I said that you have to do, if let's say you want to bring in another field, if it wasn't title, let's say it was body, you would have to go into structure, content types, manage fields, and inside body, you would have to go to media front field type and you would have to say custom. Okay? And here you can provide whatever field name that you want. That name gets populated in that node object that you get in JavaScript. So you can, so in this case, I could, let me just do that. So in my body, I have custom, I have the body field. I'm going to hit save. Let me make sure that this actually has a body. This is awesome. I'm going to try to do this really fast, just so you, just to so you, show you if I'm not talking how fast this can go. So in my template TPL file, I'm just going to say um, div id equals media player body. Dang it! Inside my custom JavaScript, I have to tell the player about it. You copy and paste, so you're not error prone. Um, and then, now that I now that I did that on my um, inside Drupal, I exposed it as a custom field. I can now say this elements body text node body. There it is. 
Oh, I did it as markup. Ah, HTML. So there you go. That that is how fast it goes. It's really you can you can pull in whatever fields you want into the media player into the media player display. But you just you have to make sure that you go to manage fields, you go to edit, and you expose that field to media front. Otherwise, it's it's just going to ignore it. So that's exactly what you're doing with the image. It's just dynamically naming the field. Yep, it's dynamically it's dynamically naming it. In fact, all of it all of the code uses that same. In fact, the, the derived class that I called, that's what it's doing. It's just taking that and it's populating it inside predefined elements, which are determined by the template that is the... So that's why, that's why the base class, the base class is called get elements because it doesn't know what markup you want. You, you establish markup in the template. That is something that no other media player out there does. Every other media player hijacks the DOM and dumps whatever whatever um, HTML markup they want to populate. And it's up to you to, deter to figure out how to get custom fields in place. Whereas MediaFront, it makes it real easy. You just, you just uh, override your template.